Welcome back to Bean Energy. Today we're gonna to go through a build that is affordable. This is gonna be a 1.6 kilowatt hour lithium ion repurposed battery with a one kilowatt inverter, 60 amp charge controller, 460 watts worth of solar. And the way we're building it here, you can put this together for less than 800 bucks. Let's get going. So what we need to do here is assemble all these individual batteries or 16 individual 4S lithium ion batteries here so that you have one positive and one negative. So what I did is I looked at the wire gauge coming off of each of these batteries. And I said, if I take about five of these batteries and parallel them together, a 10 gauge wire is gonna be overkill for that. I wanted to make sure that the wire that ran from each of the battery groups over to the main lug that will then be our main positive and negative was gonna be heavy enough that the BMS would trip on all four of the batteries well before the wire that I chose was gonna be overrun with current. So I chose 10 gauge wire, that's what I had around, and I used four or five of these batteries in parallel. So you'll see here where I went ahead and taped these four into a group, and then I took the four positive wires, uh, wrapped them together along with the 10 gauge and soldered it up and threw some heat shrink on top of that to protect it from shorting out on anything. And then we'll run this back and pull all uh, four groups together into one lug and crimp that together so that we've got a solid connection back to our main lug coming out of the ammo case. So at the core of this build is going to be the batteries. This is typically the most expensive piece of an off-grid build. What we have here are some batteries from batteryhookup.com. You can see that they're a little bit old. These are from 2008. These came out of probably some backup light fixtures or something. These are a 4S lithium ion, eight amp hour. They are little pouch cells in here. And the best thing about these is that they already have a BMS. So while we're doing a battery build here, we don't have to build the BMS into it and worry about that. It's really just paralleling a bunch of wires in a safe way. Once we have all these together, we'll be able to power a one kilowatt inverter right over here. So this here is an Ames brand pure sine wave inverter. We can do a thousand watts out of here. You know, it's got a USB port on the side for charging in case, you know, a thousand watts on AC isn't enough. And you even have the remote on off switch. You can get that um, and run a cord somewhere. That's great for you got a battery. You can discharge it with the inverter. The other thing is going to be your solar charge controller. So this is an inexpensive solar charge controller. You typically get it for about a hundred bucks. And this will give us 60 amps worth of charging into the batteries. For the solar panels, what we're gonna be using for this build, as an example, is some 230 watt sharp panels. These are used, but as you can see, even used panels look, it just looks beautiful and they perform really well. Solar panels are supposed to last 20 to 25 years, but grabbing these panels that are five or 10 years old, they still look great. And I think they're, they're great for these types of setups because something like that you can pick up locally for about 60 bucks a pop. We've got batteries that already have built-in BMSs. We've got a pure sine wave inverter and a charge controller. Now, to make things a little bit nicer and hopefully a little bit more safe, we're going to put the batteries inside of this metal ammo box. This is a Fat 50 ammo box if you're going to look for what size it is. We'll have the links to all of these uh, down below in the description. For uh, your batteries, if you go to Battery Hookup to buy these or any other batteries, use Bean as the discount code to get 5% off. All right, so let's get going with paralleling some of these batteries up so we can drop them in this case. All right, you can notice that I've already built a battery with these and then taken it back apart again. Um, one of the things with these lithium ion cells is you typically can't run a 4S lithium ion setup. And the reason for that is because the voltage is too high. So the nominal voltage on these is around 14.8, which is already higher than the max voltage for a typical 12 volt battery. What we're doing is we chose an inverter that can do up to 16 volts. So we'll charge these batteries up to 16 volts, which does sound a little bit high for being 12 volt battery, but it'll work for our inverter. So this is not gonna be a battery that's built for running 12 volt accessories, but it'll be great for running an inverter. I'm paralleling four of these batteries at a time. And notice the gauge on these is quite small. I don't know what gauge these are. It's small gauge. 
and then I'm, I'm splicing on some 10 gauge wire because that'll be plenty big enough compared to what was on there. The idea being that with BMSs, the BMSs are going to be current limited. They're gonna cut out if there's short circuit, right? And the deal is they're gonna cut out before the wire melts. So as long as the wire that I'm adding on in order to parallel, it can handle the uh, combined amperage of four of these batteries, then we'll be safe because the BMSs will all cut out in a short circuit scenario before my 10 gauge wire has a meltdown. 10 gauge is probably overkill for this. You can certainly do this with other batteries. Battery hookup has a revolving door with what batteries are available. These are the ones that were available at the time and they've got some other, some different ones now that are in 18650 form instead of pouch form. And as long as they've got a BMS built in and they're advertised as, you know, you can use them as is, then you should be able to do this same project even if these exact ones aren't available. It's always handy if they've already got leads for you to connect to. And these have the uh, heat shrink on top of them to protect. It's nice and thick heat shrink. Now that I've got that soldered on there and it's piping hot, I've got myself a piece of heat shrink. One thing to watch out for these batteries as you are building them is that they're all live, right? So as you're cutting these cords, you've got the positive and negative. Make sure you cut the negative and the positive separately. Don't just cut the negative and positive at the same time. You will short it out and cause sparky sparky. All right, so we've got all of our 10 gauge wire coming off of our positive and negative leads. And what we're gonna do is drop these into the case here where we had already done it previously, but we're gonna see how they all fit together. Now that it's together, which means there's probably something wrong and we'll have to reconfigure something. Let's see how it goes. And yes, you're dropping a battery into a metal case, so you're doing it very carefully, right? You know what? No, we don't drop it in. I just remembered how you do this. You slide it in. Isn't that nice? Positive cables out that way, negative cables out this way. I'm gonna take this one here, drop it in next to it. Nice and snug fit there. We could have actually put more in here if I had purchased more batteries. So, you know, more than 1.6 kilowatt hours. If you wanna do one of these yourself. Well, realistically, maybe only one more pack. So we're not that far off. What we've got now is the packs will all fit in here, but we need to put some holes in here for our terminals. So instead of just running janky wires out of metal hole that's gonna rub and cause shorts, we're gonna run some terminals like this. And we're gonna connect to said terminals with these. So one terminal will fit in this hole here that I had used for a different purpose, but we need to figure out another place to put a terminal. And I'm debating how symmetrical I want this to be, because if you look at the inside, I don't think I would want to go straight down to here because it's getting kind of close to this battery here. Ideally, down here somewhere, which I think is what I'm going to go for. So let's grab a drill bit, drill a hole, and put a couple terminals in this battery case. So this little thing in the bob is pretty slick, right? You got a piece of metal that's running. Oh, that's metal on metal. You don't want that. No, what you actually have is a little indention here. So we're going to pop this through the hole. You can see it pop out the other side here. So now you've got this ceramic stuff that's insulating the case from my threaded rod. Now we can have a pass-through connector. So what I'm doing right now is, is checking that this, the threads coming out of here aren't too much, because if there's too many threads coming out, uh, then the thumb screw will bottom out. So watch this. So it'll actually hold on to whatever's in there. Whereas if I had, if I screw this out somewhere, like this, then trying to put this on, you know, bottom out, there's a big gap. Don't want that. No gap. So we'll pull it into about there. And then what we need to do is tighten this up. So it's hard to hold on to this side because there's really no nut to hold on to. But on the other hand, this is ceramic and it will crack if you put too much torque on it. So, super hand tight is fine. Is that it's tight enough that you can tighten this up and then loosen it back again without the other part of the rod loosening back up. So we got that one on, let's get our red one on. Okay, and now we got all kinds of nuts and washers laying around. Let's, uh, 
let's slide a battery back in here. You do want to be careful with these lithium ion batteries. This is not something, I'm joking around, but this is not something to take lightly. You do not want to, you do not want to shorten here. You don't want to be banging around the batteries like I did. You notice that I haven't stripped the ends of these yet. To protect me a little bit, I want these all to be a fairly tight fit so that, uh, so that they're not bouncing around inside. Um, so I'm gonna have to do something with this one that's sitting on top. Probably sticking some foam around it to keep it in place once things are all mounted. So what we have now is we have four negative and four positive wires. And we need to crimp these into, so crimp these four negatives into a terminal, which I believe we'll be able to use these four gauge 3 8 terminals, because these 3 8 will fit nicely on here. That scared me for a second. I thought it wasn't gonna fit. Um, this is a 3 8 bolt. So let's see if we can get these wires stripped and crimped onto here. Looks like these will stuff in. Not to be confused with Stefan. Oh yeah. yeah. I think that might be it. So you can see that we started winging out. Um, it's probably, probably more wire than a typical four gauge wire. We are solid. Let's get some heat shrink for that puppy. Stuff looks like it'll fit nicely. All right. We can do a little bit of cable management here. I'm not usually dealing with this many large wires. All right. That's going to be the winner. Looks like they're in there. There we go. Okay, so let's go with our negative first, if I can get a hold of it here. Now we find out if my wires are long enough. It's going to be a little tight down there. So these are 8 amp hour cells. If we were going to discharge at 1C, that would be discharging the whole battery in one hour, which would be discharging at eight amps per individual battery that we had in here. They might be fine for a surge of one amp, sorry, a surge of one C, but probably more like a half C. And we'll see when we get this, we'll see when we get this all hooked up and run this inverter on it. A 1000 watt inverter is probably gonna run in the 80 to 90 amp range. At half C, that would be above a half C for, for this battery. I think we'll be okay. And we'll see, we've got four 10 gauge wires, which typically those are rated for 30, 35 amps a piece. So we're well within our rating there, but the wires between the 10 gauge down to the individual batteries are pretty small um, because the BMSs on these batteries are probably rated for more like one half C to one C discharge rate. Uh, we will see how well this works. The last thing that I said I was going to do was make sure that this top set of cells doesn't go bouncing around. So I'm just going to cut some foam to stick between the walls of the ammo case and the cells. I would also put something, line this whole box with something so that it's not just metal that you're putting these batteries into. If you did it with foam or even like a cardboard uh, or a paper or something, so that it's not battery to metal. These batteries do have a very thick shrink wrap on them though. So for these cells and these batteries specifically, I'm not too worried about it. When you go do yours, these might not be available and it might be something else and you need to make sure that yours is staying safe. Let me rant a little bit about what this is and why people are gonna say this doesn't work. This is a lithium ion battery. This is not a lithium iron phosphate battery. Lithium ion batteries are like 3.6, 3.7 volts nominal. When you try to make a 12 volt battery out of them so that inverters or 12 volt accessories work with a lithium ion, the voltage range doesn't work very well. Because with a 3S, the voltage range is too low. Your max voltage is like 12 and a half volts. With a 4S, it's too high. Your max voltage is 16.8 volts. And so you stay out of the range. You're either on the top of the range or the bottom of the range and it doesn't work very well. The deal with these cells, these little batteries that I bought, is they're super cheap. So we're not going to be able to use the full capacity of these batteries in our build. The inverter that we chose can do up to 16 volts input. That's still below the top voltage of the batteries that we chose. These batteries have a max voltage of about 16.8. So we're going to be shaving off the top 
and not charging them all the way. Now the power mister will allow us to do that. We can set the charge profile on here to do bulk charging up to 16 volts or 15.8 or something like that to keep it below the alarm voltage of the inverter. So it'll work great as this little setup. And that's the plan for this is to make it a super simple, very inexpensive solar panel charge controller battery inverter setup. I wouldn't want to go plug in a bunch of 12 volt accessories in here unless you're willing to accept the risk that they might die because it is going to be higher voltage. Unless you set the charge or to only go up to 14.6 volts, but that's only going to be somewhere around nominal voltage for these cells and you're not going to get a lot of capacity out of them. As it is, we should be getting 80-85% capacity. They're used cells as well, so we're looking probably at 60 to 80% capacity out of these that we'll get. We will do a test and find out how well they do. Just to wrap this up, what we did is we built a 1.3 kilowatt hour battery. That's what we were able to test at, so that's charging up to 16 volts, which is the max that our inverter can handle. We can then discharge down to the BMS cutoff voltage, which is gonna be somewhere around 11 and a half volts or so, and that gives us 1.3 kilowatt hours. Now, if we look at the original capacity of these batteries, they were supposed to be 123 watt hours a piece and we're getting about 67% of that so with the combination that they're old batteries because they are used these ones that I got were about 12 years old which is you know saying something that they all still worked we're not charging to 16.8 volts we were only charging to 16 volts so we lost a little bit of capacity on the top end it was still less than 200 bucks for the battery that includes the all the batteries the cells the BMS's the box the terminals, everything for less than 200 bucks. It was well under 200 bucks. Um, obviously, if there's some tools that you have to buy in order to build it that you don't already have, that adds to it, but just for the, the cost of the battery itself. Some of these solar panels here to charge it up, a solar charge controller for 100 bucks, the panels, you can usually find these locally for about 60 bucks a piece. The Palmister charge controller, the 60, 60 amp charge controller is usually about 100 bucks and the inverter was uh, this one was a high quality thousand watt Ames inverter which I would recommend because it can do the 16 volt high voltage cutoff usually they're 15 15 and a half volts and this one will go up to 16 so definitely recommend this model this this brand the Ames brand they tend to have a higher voltage capability and that was like 220 I think off of Amazon so all together you know, like less than 700 bucks for this whole system. Fairly capable solar system for very cheap. That's what we were going for here and it worked. It would have worked out a little better if we had an inverter charger that could handle more than 16 volts and maybe one will pop up and we'll be able to do some 4S lithium ion in the future. Lithium iron phosphate's a little more expensive, it is safer. The lithium ion, uh, you do wanna be careful. Preferably you'd have the battery not inside of a living space just because there is some danger there, but you do have BMSs on them and do the proper wire sizing inside and it's gonna be safe, it's just a matter of how safe. Because with lithium ion, if you do have a problem, it could cause a thermal meltdown in a sense. Whereas with lithium iron phosphate, you know, it's, it's much more safe and you're not going to cause a fire necessarily. We're going to call that a wrap here on Bean Energy. Talk to you later.